What's up, Legends? We've got a couple of fantasy games to go through to round out round six, and it's the Tigers losing to the Dragons there, 24 to 12. And there were a few good scores. It wasn't a super high-scoring game. Probably a good thing, considering I don't think many of us had too many players in this game. It was probably Coruscant and potentially a, a Lomax or a Stefano, if anyone bought him this week, and then guys like Papali'i and, and Jaden Sua, who are up there in the good scores too. But uh, but Jaden was the, the big winner in this one with 61 with a try, 19 tackles in 80 minutes is uh, pretty crazy for a back rower, that's for sure. Um, looks like a, a lot of the a lot of the play was on the other side, if I'm being correct. Jaden Sewer, yeah. Anyway, Papa Lee was making plenty of um plenty of tackles on that side anyway. But uh, yes, yeah, so that's him. That's that one for him. Happy days. Hold on. No buys. Alex Twal, 59 in 46 minutes. It's an incredible effort. Um, PPM from him. Averaging 42, though, so it's a very up-and-down scenario at the moment for him. Lomax, 58. He's just playing the best footy of his career, in my opinion, and up and involved in everything, taking catches, offloading at will, and uh, in those situations as well. So 58 for him with those goals and the try assist as well. With the try, uh, he's been absolutely crushing it, averaging 51 for the year. He's got another 50,000 or so to make, and I think he can stay there for the majority of the year as a dual-position guy not playing Origin. Very, very good situation there for, for Zaki Lomax. Isaiah Papali'i with 54 on his one there. So 48 tackles, 83 on the run meters with a couple of offloads there. Gets him into a um, you know, a nice a nice score. But again, averaging 49 for the season, it's very hard to to look at him as a good selection this week with uh, you know, with the other cheaper options in the edge especially. Speaking of mid, Stefano with a try and line break with a couple of tackle breaks there and still only... 51 so you'll take the the 51 score but i suppose the um the base stats were very low from him with 93 on the run meter side minutes are incredible 60 if he can get that on a regular basis he's going to be uh, he, he will score in the 50s but i suppose it's a low one on the base stats thankfully you got to try to round that out speaking of players that are doing fairly well at the moment aiden caesar he's, he's getting involved in everything 28 tackles for zero misses super impressive running the footy a bit and then good kick meters at 343. Appy ended up taking the goal kicking back, which was good for owners of him. And uh, yeah, not for Caesar. That would have been a little cherry on top that, that could have almost made him a buy at his 466k price. Asuka Power played 53 minutes there and picked up a try with a line break. He's such a good utility they can use through the outside backs and the uh, and the edge position. So I imagine he'll keep his spot longer term. Jack DeBellin, 48, kind of just hanging around there for now. Uh, Fitella Mariner, 46, for those that are still kicking on with him. It's a good score. Corusau with that nice try assist to Stefano. Hardly ran the footy, hardly kicked it. A few errors um, you know, in penalties. Neg 10 overall, so it's not great. You'll take the 44. He's obviously priced at the 50 mark. He's made a bit of cash for you. I think now that he got the goal kicking back, it's, it's an easier easier hold. But um, yeah, didn't look at his best at all on the weekend. But thankfully, yeah, still a 44. Ben Hunt with a couple of try assists. Didn't have his best game either. He was pretty annoyed with himself even after they won with five errors in this one in a penalty conceded. So at 43, he'll, he's been better than that. Flanagan, or Flanagan, as people describe him as, 26 tackles for a miss and uh, and one try in there as well with a turnover tackle. So a very nice score for his 43. Stems the flow of, uh, you know, if he went another 20-odd, he would have lost some money. But uh, at 441, hold or sell is completely fine. In his situation, they have a fairly you know decent draw coming up, so it, it would be okay to hold. You got Little in there. He actually had a really nice game, running the footy well, but um, didn't you know, translate in the scoring with only 39. If you've got him, you're holding. Clemmer, no, no one any, no one has him at the moment. Junior Tupo, a bit of a stronger running game for him. Eisenhuth, unfortunately, got moved out to the centres, so that stunted his scoring there, picking up some some missed tackles in that position. Doreen Bullard is uh, he's still actually made a little bit of cash, but that's going to start to slow down now that he's you know had a couple of lower ones in his uh, in his little rolling average there. Blake Laurie also some low ones for him to start the season, so he's going to continue to go down. And if he happens to build up to some bigger minutes, which I'm not sure if it will happen with some of the other guys that they've bought, but um, Laurie will be you know an interesting one at some point. Moses Suli with 31, he ended up with that uh, try assist, which was nice, and uh, yeah, three tackle breaks and an offload. 139 run meters. You know, he's had more in other weeks, but um, yeah, 31. You'll take it. Um, he's not a, not a, like a clear sell, a, an urgent sell, but um, one of those guys that you'll 
you will want to move on from in the center position eventually. And I suppose if you haven't got you know, Iroh and he becomes a buy this week, then um, then that could be an option there for sure. And we'll move to the second game now in the Raiders and the Titans. This one was a little bit more fantasy relevant, that's for sure, with, with Jamal Fogarty going absolutely bonkers in this one with an 82. Yes, it uh, basically went the full way as well. And you know, congrats to him for getting that field goal at the end there, which was really nice for him. But four goals, the, the field goal, the try assist, Big tackle numbers at 29, but missed eight as well. Obviously, on Fafita, I had to deal with that uh, for a while there. And um, and four tackle breaks for him in that. So he did go up in run meters overnight with the extra tackle break. And then he picked up a couple of force dropouts and some kick meters as well. So you see here, this is the type of score that you see from you know the Hines and the and the Clearies when they have you know, obviously some negatives in there, but they just score in so many different ways. Like the only stat he didn't really pick up, the only stats he didn't pick up was an offload and a, tr- and a try. So everything else he got good, good numbers from. So yeah, you, know, you look at that force dropout, so four of them, and that's an that's a try, yeah, you know, in, in comparison. So really good stuff for Fogs. Um, just remember, guys, there's going to be some inflated stats just because of the extra nine minutes that was played. But Jamin Jolliffe, I was looking at him as a mid purchase this week, and comes out and absolutely dominates with a try there. Fifty four tackles for one miss. So he's someone that's he was on my radar and he still continues to be with that 75 he obviously is going to go up a fair bit of coin but um yeah if he's going to be the guy that plays sort of near that 60 minutes then then he's definitely an option but they're still playing they're doing that Cleese Haas and and Fafita roulette at the moment in their back row so yeah not sure how that's playing out but Chris Randall played the full 90 um, in this one so yeah very impressive from him for 70 with a try assist a try saver as well 61 tackles and as I said, the ball ball was clearly in play for a long time. Like you got both for more down here is 60 tackles as well. And we'll touch on him there with that score of 63, mainly in that, uh, you know, tackle and, and run base. He is getting closer and closer to a buy. I think he looks better and better. This is a very free flowing game and he didn't look tired at all. Just getting in, getting in and making his tackles and doing good work, trying to be involved, uh, especially at the back end of the game there when they were trying to help, you know, she was trying to help them get a win. He was there ready to go. So yeah, good score from him with 63. Helped my super coach team out, that's for sure. Uh, Kieran Foreman we need to speak about. So I do think now with the the Jaden Campbell injury, which we'll speak about in a sec, that there's a good chance that um, AJ Brimson just goes to one and they bring Tanner Boyd back, which would hurt Foreman's kick meters. But he made 37 tackles as well. So it was just a, such a high base stack game for everyone. Just be aware of that when you're looking at buying these guys that this will probably probably be an outlier score for a lot of these guys. Like Joe Tarpany played 70 minutes, which you know is probably going to be 60, which he's been in the mid in the 50s to 60 type of minutes at the moment. But um, you know, 68 from him, 303 run meters. So everything, as I said, was inflated at uh, in this game. But he had an awesome one as well, helped them uh, get into a position to get that field goal away, which was nice. Hudson Young, like you see, you know. Tarpany 51s, his uh, season average 45 for Young, and they've both went way over that. Same with both for more. All of these guys went way over their season average, not even close. So uh, there's that. Hudson Young 67, uh, he's a little bit closer on the buy list, but again, these if you're looking to buy Raiders now, yes, it's good for you know the major buy rounds, but they miss round 10, round 14, so it's hard to to look at those guys now unless they're like a clear, really important buy. Smitty's the best hold of the year. I wish I did. <laughs> 60, what would it go? 59, 61. So a nice 120 in two weeks after the sell. So that, as I said in last night's video, go back and check that. The five things I learned plus the fantasy tip was um, just holding guys that, uh, you know, even if you think they're potentially a sell, just hold them. And that's uh, the mistake I made with Smitty's and uh, we won't be making it again. That's for sure. So 61 for him, all in base, getting big run meters, big tackle numbers now, no misses in this, no errors, no nothing. Um, so he's just absolutely turned it on the last two weeks. Like he didn't have this PPM uh, in the previous ones, but um, yeah, funny how that works. At to Mariotta as well. A few people asking me about him. With his one, guys, he's, he's benefited the last three weeks from Hosking going down injured in two of them and missing last week as well to get bigger minutes. So a 57 for him in this one, a little bit inflated and we'll get Whitehead back eventually. So I don't think Mariotta is a buy. Fafita played 69 minutes in this one. So he came on after about 21 Minute, 22 minutes or something like that and played out the rest of the game he had three offloads he had good tackle numbers there with 29 and 190 run meters so that was great across the board for him um 
looking to be, you know, potentially a buy eventually, but I think by the time he becomes a purchase and is worth, you know, the price that, that, we're, that you're trying to get him for is going to be the time that he, um, you yeah, know, moves off to origin. How good is Ethan Strange? So picked up a 50 in this one with a line break in the back end there that helped them. Yeah, you know, he was kind of the reason they got in an opportunity to to kick that field goal, which was amazing. He's been great, guys. 20 tackles for two misses, good run meters. Looks really sharp with ball in hand. You know, footwork's great. Picked up a try assist on the back, uh, on the inside to, to Hudson Young, which was great. And, and he's going to be a hold for long, a long time, I think. He's got that six spot locked up. And what about all the, the talk that he was going to be out? That um, can be a crazy world sometimes. And yeah, you know, the male, 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 male. Oh no, he's completely fine. Stupid. How that works sometimes. Uh, Brian Kelly, 47. Smith Shields, 47. Good score. That says good scores across the board. Brimson, if he goes to one, I think he becomes a really solid purchase. Shouldn't play Origin either, but he looked incredible at the back end there where he got that line break, a few tackle breaks there. At fullback, he'll be really cool. And they played a bit better, Titans, in this one, which is nice. Cleese Haas, just can keep holding him until um until he gets put on the bench, basically. So he's doing really well in that position. Uh, yeah, Darren Clark, 42. You, you take that as an owner. Pretty much what you bought him for, to be fair, 40, 40 to 45, which is good. If you did buy, if you looked at Mo Fodawaka, unfortunately a 41, bigger minutes too um, with the extra time, but just still not scoring well. Timoko, solid if you got him. Schiller, if you bought him this week, he picked up two tries, which was great. Um, couldn't ask for too much more out of this game for him. He'll make some good cash, but um, yeah, I don't, don't think he's a buy going forward. Two try, 39. Seb Chris, 35, solid. Campbell looks like he's um looks like he's pretty cooked. We'll have to see what happens with him. But um, yeah, not not in a good way, unfortunately. It was his right knee that he had problems with, and now he, he had a knee brace on the left and then uh, cooked that. Apparently he was carrying something coming into this game, had to do a fitness test to to play. So of course he did. Of course he did. That's how it goes, unfortunately. Hopefully he's okay, but um we'll find out through the week and he might be a sell. But uh, yeah, tough times. Savage twenty seven. Chevy Stewart got updated to 26. He picked up six kick defusals, 205 run meters, a turnover tackle, no tackle breaks, no offloads, no attacking stats. So 26, you'll still, you know, 19 wasn't nice before updates, but 26, you'll cop. And uh, yeah, that's that's sweet. We still haven't got to Levi yet, but Hosking with a 21 in 33 minutes was doing fine before he uh, dislocated his shoulder. So he's clearly a sell now. It's unfortunate, guys, but um, has to happen. And then uh, Danny Levi, 18, 58 minutes. So 25 tackles for four misses. Looked fine out there, but just he just doesn't accumulate points, unfortunately, without tries. He's now a sell. Um, done your job, Levi. Thank you for your service, but you will be out of my side this week. That is for sure. And we'll have to work out what's happening with, with Taylor May as well in that one. But uh, on the on the Supercoach side of things, we will um, quickly get into that one there. For the week and the last two games. So we had Tigers and Dragons there. We had really good setup there. We had uh, Kapoa get a good as a good score. Obviously, Coruscant was 63. was solid, so I had him in my team there. And uh, really not much else in that game, as I said. And then you're looking at uh, guys like Lomax to just continue to do great work. And 93 there in this one. Anyone who has Eisenhuth, still a hold there. Lomax is a good purchase. Flanagan... If you held on, happy days on that front. And then the Raiders and the Titans game. If you had Fogs, you were really happy with 96. Same with that of Strange, the 83, and playing him. If you bought Schiller, 69 was awesome. Joe Taps becomes more of a, a look in over the next few weeks. Smithy, 68, was great as well. I said Hosking is in a little bit of trouble and is a sell. And Levi, 18, not good for, for holders, although he's done great the last few weeks. Joloff was the big one at 94. And uh, Fafita, 71, with both for more, 71 as well. So a nice score from both of them. And uh, Brimson, he becomes a little bit more of a look in at center wing over the next few weeks. So we'll, um, yeah, we'll, have, we'll keep him in our thoughts, but he's going to be yeah, still a mid, mid-tier mid price, that's for sure. So that's that one, guys. Jaden Campbell, 31. Yeah, a little bit of a worry, and we'll see what happens with him coming into next week. But uh, thanks for coming into the last two games analysis. And I can't wait to you know go through our round results and, and really look forward to, to round seven with uh, you know getting three trades, which is going to be fun in fantasy. So thanks for being here, guys. We'll see you in the next one.